This one gentleman comes up to me and he goes, "You know what you said in the khutbah today? It really hit home with me. It just it personally affected me." And you know, sometimes you meet somebody and you look in their eyes and their eyes or their face tell you that they have a story to tell. It tell their eyes are are showing you that they got a story to tell. And this gentleman had that look on his face. So when he said it hit home with me, I I I said, "You know, if you don't mind, can I sit down with you and you could tell me how it personally affected you?" He said, "Yeah, sure, no problem." He sat down with me and he told me that today was the first time that I've prayed in almost a year. And I was like, "Really? Subhanallah." And he said, "And it's not like, you know, I t- accepted Islam a year ago or something like that." No, no, no. He said, "I grew up in a very religious practicing home. I grew up performing salah. I grew up around the masjid and prayer, but I had not I had not prayed in almost a year. And today was the first time I prayed." I said, "What happened?" He said, "A year ago, my life was at the point where things were working out. You know, everything the plan was coming to fruition. All right? Things were going my way." I was nearing the end of my mes- medical residency. I was fielding offers from clinics and doctors and medical groups, right? And I was, you know, we had lived in a small little apartment driving a beat-up car. I had a young wife, two small babies, two small children. And now that I was about to, you know, get a real job, I was going to be making a lot of money, so we were house shopping and checking out nice neighborhoods and good schools for our kids, and we went minivan shopping and it just Everything was mashallah. It was amazing. Everything was working out. I had two beautiful healthy children. I loved my wife. My wife loved me. Everything was wonderful. And he says one afternoon I came home a little bit early and I walked in and said salam. I didn't hear anyone. But it was a time that my wife usually used to put the kids down for a nap. And she would take a nap herself. So I decided, you know what? I'm going to let them sleep. I'm not going to disturb them. So I ate a little something. I started reading something. After a while I started to hear some commotion from the room. You know when kids wake up and they start to get a little fussy and you can hear the commotion in the room. So I started hearing the kids getting fussy. So I make my way over to the room and I open the door and the kids are sitting up on the bed, they're awake and they're getting fussy, one of them's crying. And my wife is just laying there still. So being a doctor, I just jumped right in and I checked her and she'd been dead for a while now. She's passed away in her sleep. He said at that moment I just completely fell apart inside. I just I fell apart. And he said that for the next 2 weeks, he said I did not leave the confines of my room. I sat in my room in the dark alone by myself for 2 weeks. He said that for 2 weeks I did not even hold my own children in my own hands. My mom and my brother and everybody was taking care of my kids. I was just in a daze. I, I nothing made sense to me anymore. I didn't even know where I was. And he said slowly slowly I started to recover I started to get over this tragedy but he said spiritually I was still busted I was still broken and my brother he said who was who was very devout very regular about his prayer and he was there for me the entire time he was telling me he said you need to pray you need to talk to Allah that's how your wound will finally heal up what will close that wound on your heart is when you talk to Allah you need it brother you need it And he was slowly slowly lightly been talking to me not pushing me too hard because he knew what I'd been through. And eventually today this morning we woke up and he said you're coming to the masjid with me. You need to come listen to some Quran, listen to some the khutbah, the talk of being and then pray in the congregation and you will feel better. So he said I said bismillah and I came with him and then when you talked about the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam and what he went through and he lost his wife and his children lost their mother he said it solved my problem for me. because now i realize i'm not alone i'm not alone the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam went through the same thing that, that i was going through he knew my pain and if he was able to wake up the next morning and go out there and keep doing what he had to do then so can i and i'll be okay inshallah you know the reason why i tell you that story is for me that was like the light bulb moment you know sometimes you know something about the life of the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam or you know an ayah of the quran and then you meet someone you hear about an experience and it just it hits you like a ton of bricks and that's what happened to me and subhanallah you know that it's been about 2 years since that meeting happened and after some time you know time passes and you lose the effect of that conversation so allah sends you another reminder about a month ago i was giving the same talk at a community when i get done giving the talk this one brother walks up to me 
And this brother says, you know what you just, the story you just told? That same thing happened to me five years ago. He said, I didn't have small children. I had two sons, 10 and 12 years old. But same thing, they were in their rooms, playing their video games, doing their thing. And I came home from work and salam, 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 and I don't hear anything. I'm calling her name, I don't hear anything. I go in the bedroom and she's passed out on the floor and check her, she's been dead for a while. She just died. And he said, five years later now, my sons are 15 and 17 years old, and now I can stand before you and say, me and my boys have just now started to kind of get over losing the most important person in our life. Now I want, the reason why I say this is I want you to think about the Prophet He lost his wife, his children lost their mother, and then on top of that, he lost the man who was his family. But the Prophet had a job, didn't he? And he had the most difficult job any human beings ever had, to take the message of truth to all of humanity. How did the Prophet wake up the next morning and do what he had to do? Keep going out there, keep teaching the message, keep preaching the message. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him an outlet. Allah gave him a resource. Allah gave him something that healed his wounds, that recharged his battery, that reinvigorated his spirit. And what was that? That is what we call salah, prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala at that point in his life took him on the journey that we call al-isra wal mi'raj the night journey and the ascension above the heavens and there Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave him the gift of the five times daily prayer the five times daily prayer and that five times daily prayer is what charged the battery of the Prophet it's what allowed him to work through all this adversity and difficulty and all the other adversity and difficulty that would come later on